do these things, what it will lead to, and this is the case with, I mean, uh, I don't have time to go through all the examples of many of the ulama, al-Khattabi and others, Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'i, said that we saw people who used to stand the whole night in Qiyam al doing tahajjud, and they would be so tired, oh, I'm gonna, now I'm going to sleep. They sleep and the Allah of Fajr goes, and they get up and they don't get up. They slept through Fajr. As some of the Sahaba said, for me to pray one Salat al Fajr in Jama'ah with the Muslims is better than praying a thousand Raka'ah in the night. Of course, those Nawafil are fantastic, but you will not be asked about them on the day of Qiyamah. You will be asked about Salat al Fajr whether you prayed it on time or not. When you exaggerate, when you go beyond the limits, you are going to kill some of the Sunnah. And that's exactly what we see in the people. And in other cases, the exaggeration goes another way, right? And then they start talking about all of these things. <laughs> you want to make music halal. You want to make intermingling halal. You can hug your girlfriend. You can shake hands with her and everything else. Yes, and the deen is gone. They are the furthest people from the sunnah. They are the furthest people from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who want to play with the deen of Allah jalla wa'ala. So all of these you know, philosophical arguments and so on and so forth. Even in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, he would come with silly things and he would be angry. Like the better one who came and he tied his camel far away. He wasn't a Muslim, but he wanted to test the Prophet ﷺ. Aina naqati. Aina naqati. I mean, Allah sent me to tell you where your camel is. He's asking the Prophet ﷺ, where is my camel? And he became angry, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He doesn't have knowledge of the unseen. How does he know where that man's camel is? But eventually the Prophet ﷺ decided that, you know, Allah revealed it to him, so he would tell him, just as a proof to him that he is the Messenger of Allah wasallam. And one time they were sitting and people are asking all sorts of questions. Man Abi, how do I know who your father is? He's asking, who's my father? And so one of the Sahaba got up and said, Radina billahi rabba, wa bil islam dina, wa bi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know, we are pleased with Allah as our Lord, and with Islam as our, with, uh, as our religion, and with Muhammad وسلم, as our messenger. In the time of the Prophet والسلام, they were told not to ask too many questions. Don't ask things, because the fear was, if you keep asking, Allah will make things compulsory for you, and you will not be able to tolerate those things. You will not be able to do those things. <coughs> Uh, when the Prophet ﷺ taught them about the Hajj, somebody wants to know, is it every year? He said, Hajj. Accept it. You do Hajj once and finish. You keep asking, Allah will make it compulsory. The Prophet ﷺ prayed Qiyam with them for some nights in Ramadan, and then he didn't come out one of the nights. And he never told them it was far. He never told them they have to. This is a voluntary act. So he started making noise outside his house, hoping that he would come out. The next morning, what did he say? Don't think, I don't know what was going on. But I didn't come out because I feared if you keep doing this, then Allah will make it compulsory for you, and you will not be able, you will not be able to keep up. There are many things left to say, but I think we will conclude perhaps by reminding ourselves again of the fact that we must be keen to follow the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, and to teach it to others. And when we talk about teaching it to others, then first we want to do that by practicing it ourselves. It is important for us to learn the sunnah but, and to teach the sunnah, but most importantly we learn and we put it into practice ourselves. Al Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, alayhi rahmatullah, one of the great scholars of Islam, a muhaddith, one who compiled the hadith. When he put together his work known as Al Musnad, in it there are 40,000 hadith, including the ones which are repeated and so forth. Do you know what he said about that? <coughs> he said, when I put together this compilation, I didn't come across a single hadith which recommended certain deeds except that I practiced it. So a wise guy, a smart aleck, said, 
Oh, and what about the one where the Prophet ﷺ went to the cave? Remember? Ghar al-Hira. He used to go and he used to spend time in the cave. So then, Imam Muhammad rahimahullah said, as a matter of fact, when that whole fitna of the creation of Qur'an came about, I spent three nights in that cave and he told him the cave in which he spent the time. 40,000 hadith. He said every single one which incurs any action, any deed, I did it by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you and I, this is the frame of mind we should have. That if we hear an authentic hadith, we read an authentic hadith. The niyyah should be, even if I'm not able to do it now, inshallah, one day I will practice, at least once in my life, I want to practice that hadith. At least once in my life. Can we not have that intention? This is, so it's important for us not just to read, not just to hear. Otherwise, it's like when you walk by the churches, you know, they put these wonderful, or that hadith that you get in your inbox every day, hadith a day. We go through them as though it is any other writing. These are the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Words that should be written with gold. Pay attention to them and have the intention to apply them in your life. This is the, the attitude that every one of us must have. It is required that we learn the hadith, we learn the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu we apply it and we teach it and we teach it to others. Teaching it to others is extremely important. Why? One, you are guiding them towards something good. Secondly, what comes along with it? It's an obligation. Now you know something <coughs> that is authentic from the Prophet ﷺ, share it with others. Do not be stingy. Do not be selfish. As I said earlier, we want good for everybody. Don't forget also, now everybody who learns this from you, you, when every time they do it, let's just Take for the sake of, of arguing, you teach somebody the dua to be recited when they go into the toilet. Akramakumullah. A dua to recite before going into the toilet. They never knew it before you taught them. Do you know every time that person says that dua, alhamdulillah, they get rewarded for it. And the same thing is written for you in your book as though you did it yourself. I mean, there's no better investment plan in the world. You teach somebody something good, and they act upon it, they get their full reward. It is not diminished in any way. And you get a similar reward for doing it. Now imagine that person teaches his family and the, their children, and it goes on and on and on and on. All those people rewards will come to you because they learn from a person who ultimately learned from you. And of course, all of us, ultimately the rewards go back to whom? To Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, this is something that we don't want to be lacks about. I want to conclude by reminding myself and the rest of you with what I started out with. This deen is the deen of Allah. It is the religion of Allah. It is not for me and it is not for anybody else to play around with it. We do that, it's worse than playing with matches. The matter is very, very clear. It's Jannah or Allah. Heaven or hell. It is that simple. The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when I speak about any matter related to this deen, I'm speaking on behalf of Allah and on behalf of His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When I'm asked, what am I going to say? Clearly, if we lie against Allah and we lie against His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, clearly, the destination is the hellfire. May Allah azza wa jal protect us all from it. I beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make us of those who are keen to learn the sunnah, keen to teach the sunnah, and keen to live by the sunnah and die by the sunnah as well. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين واستغفروا إنه هو المفروض.